So what's going on guys, it's Captain America, hope you guys are well and thank you so much for coming onto this channel. So it's a bit different, I know, because we, we tend to do pro clubs, but I mentioned that, you know, with FIFA dying down and FIFA 23 coming up around the corner, you know, we have seen, you know, not many players joining up in terms of the pro club side of things, which is understandable because you've got Modern Warfare 2 Beta coming out now, 2.0 which most probably I'm going to be playing tonight, um, and other games as well, so it's completely understandable. So what I've done is I've, I've actually opted for seasons. So 11 versus 11 against an online opposition. You can play as a club or national, as, as you guys all know. So um, now, in terms of my record, so it's the first time I've been playing like any 11 versus 11. I tend to hate it because I've always preferred pro clubs and being that one individual player in the team and, and working around that. And of course, you know, adapting in terms of like 11 versus 11 to being a, a player that you're managing as one it's always going to be very different so i was like okay let me just give it a go so it's the first time that i've done it in a very long time 11s and some of the videos that i'll be uploading uh, you know over the next coming days you'll see that it's more seasonal based until we hit fifa 23 and i'll be going back to pro clubs but just let me know your thoughts if you do enjoy these season you know online versus online like head-to-head -head battles you know, I'm more than happy to, you know, continue doing these videos as well when we do progress into FIFA 23. Um, but just to give you a quick update, you know, I have uh, progressed into Division 1 now. You know, uh, my record at the moment is 51 wins, 4 draws and 13 losses. But to be truthfully honest with you, some of the losses I just don't understand. I think it's EA based. Like, don't get me wrong, some of the games, yes, I did lose. Like, honestly, I did lose those games. But some of the games... I don't know, there's just too much lag I've, I've noticed on online head-to-head -head than on pro clubs. Like, if you see, like, some of the games that I'll be posting, you'll just notice how much lag I have in every single game. And even any slight movement that I do, it's just ridiculous. And I don't know if anyone else is uh, facing similar issues, but I was, you know, looking online. And I saw, like, there was a lot of uh, individuals that were saying, like, okay, you could do this to do that. You know, this is what you need to do in terms of your game settings as well. Uh, to reduce this type of lag but it's not all the time like I don't get like the red bar all the time but it's just I know that I got lag because it's just so slow and every time I do a pay player movement or change to another player it takes 10 years so that's something I don't know if it's an issue that is faced with other players but from what I've seen I have noticed that so I'm hoping that they do fix I don't know what it is it's just lag or internet connection I don't know what it is but generally it's not myself but it's other players as well that I've noticed in the community so that's, just, that's another downfall that I found on the season side of things. But other areas of downfalls in the seasons, you know, uh, I, I win a lot of the games. And then when the opposition leaves mid-game, sometimes the, the record of the win doesn't come through. I don't understand that. Like, it's just as if it was a nil-nil, uh, like the match did not happen. Like, there was no result, even a loss, draw or win. So I have to start that game over again uh, or with another opposition and it's just like, okay, I've won that game. It hasn't gone to my record. So that is a bit, you know, disappointing. Plus another time, <laughs> you know, and uh, I was winning 3-0, okay, against, you know, of course, players, you know, you're always going to be up against PSG. Everyone loves PSG in this bloody season's head-to-head -head game, man. Like they're the easiest team to go for. So yeah, I was playing with PSG for a bit just to understand what is all it, what what's all what is it all about, and it's just mainly, you know, you got Mbappe, Neymar, Messi that are just speedmeisters, centre back as well. You got strong, and same with goalkeeper. But Donnarumma was always making some clumsy saves for me, hence why I was like, look, I want to get away from PSG, and I don't want to be in that transition, always being like the top base club. Hence why, like, I was trying out Germany. I was playing with Liverpool at the moment. I want to try like Man City. Just to really understand which team really suits my playstyle. So talking about this team where I was winning 3-0 and the opposition left mid-game. Like, all of a sudden, it's the computer now that I'm, uh, that I'm up against. Like, it hasn't, like, literally ended the game. I'm, I'm up against a computer. My controller settings have automatically changed. I always play as a pro league, uh, not pro league, um, pro evolution uh, style. So squares my shoot. I, I've got PlayStation controller. I don't use the analog stick. I use... The little D-pad, That's I've, I've been used to that. But the whole controller changed in terms of me being on analog. My shooting was now circle. And like my running, I don't know what it was. I was just trying to understand my buttons. And then all of a sudden the team came back. Computer-wise, scored three goals. And I was like, nah, allow this, man. So I couldn't, even, I couldn't even press start to even make substitutions or leave the game. I had to hard leave and quit the game. But fortunately, I won the game because I had to. You know, the, the real human player left while I was demolishing him 
and um, for some reason I don't know why the computer went on so these little areas they really need to improve on and this is something that I've just noticed and again I haven't been playing seasons throughout the entire FIFA 22 it's just for the past week I've been playing or the past two weeks and I've noticed these issues so do let me know if you do ever play seasons or even ultimate team I don't know if you face any issues on that and hence why I don't really mind like maybe giving ultimate team a go but my only concern is I don't want to spend money you know uselessly on players and buying these players and for me hence why I want to do seasons because you start off with you know the right players and you can just build upon that in terms of like either going to a different team or your tactics accordingly um, but yeah do let me know your thoughts on that but just to give you a quick update in terms of how this game went so it was a 4-3 win on my side uh, on my side my first division one win in FIFA 22 because again I don't play seasons um, so a great performance from the boys in terms of um, Thiago, you know, interception, great ball, um, you know, intercepted uh, by the goalkeeper to Thiago, and then a shot from him. Second goal was a penalty, which I had to double check in terms of the highlights because I was I was so unsure like how it was a penalty because my shot was like uh, re reflected off uh, for a corner, but I think Marquinhos, the opposition, tackled me in the box, but I scored the penalty, and then it was uh, two three at the moment to the opposition winning three two. And then I came back with a Virgil van Dijk uh, header, which was then uh, rebounded over to myself, who then volleyed it in. So it was 3-3. And then in the fifth, 85th minute, I had to use my main boy Firmino for some skills. And he converted the chance to get the first win in terms of the Division 1 side of things. So I'm, I'm well happy. You know, I'm very well happy in terms of getting the, the, the win, especially in Division 1. You know, the whole competition is so much different compared to the other divisions. And that's similar to like pro clubs as well. You know, it's it's you have to just be more strategic, and you have to you have to you have to you have to understand like each individual player that you pick to press, because you can leave so many gaps open, and that's what I've noticed. in, in terms of like, sometimes my centre backs just follow and run, uh, or is it AI computers instead of the human computer, which leaves a wide gap in in the centre back position, and that's something I just don't understand, and I don't I don't know how to fix that, and that's something hopefully. You know, it's either a matter of a little tweak of settings or I, I think it's just the game. I just don't know. I don't know why they always run and why they play so deep as defensively. You know, it just allows the runs to come through from the opposition. Like, I just don't understand that. Like, we should have a bit more flexibility in terms of, like, managing our rules. Such as, like, okay, if we're playing defensively, stay at a high line and don't move. Like, do offside traps or whatever the situation is. We should be opting for those automatically. But it seems to be the case where defenders are being run, running, they're running through with AI, uh, is it opposition, and just completely leaving areas open, completely. Um, but again, it's just things I've noticed on seasons and things that they need to improve on. But I don't know if they're going to improve on these things. And it's similar to like pro clubs, they never improve on these certain elements that we always want, such as like substitutions. Um, and just like a pro league, like leaderboard within the, the pro club side of things to make it more competitive. Uh, you know, competitions, you know, trophies, that like actual European side of things. Just, just making it a bit more fun and engaging. Um, but that's it really on this, like, topic of all of this that I'm discussing on the season side of things. But again, as mentioned, I will be uploading more seasons videos, so do check those out. And let me know your thoughts around it as well. I think tomorrow's video, what I'm going to upload is, I was PSG, I think Division 2 versus England. Uh, seasons head-to-head. -head, and I was losing literally 4-0 first half. And that was my first game on, okay? And... And this is another thing that they should be establishing within the seasons, I've realised, because when I, when I start FIFA, I don't want to play against computers like a friendly game. I don't want to play against AIs. What I want to do is I want them to enable on seasons head-to-head -head a friendly mode. So you could just practice against like real-life opposition just to get like a gist of the game before you actually deep dive into your league side of things. Because every time I join on pro clubs or even like seasons, my first game is always rusty. Always rusty. And I know that's the fact for everyone if they if they haven't pre prepared themselves for like the games that they're going to be playing. Yes, some people do friendlies or whatever the case is, but I prefer if I play against human players because AIs, if you have it on world class or whatever the highest level is on difficulty, it is difficult to even tackle or get the ball off them. There's no point playing against AIs. Um, so they should have some sort of element of a friendly mode or practice arena or wherever it is on seasons. I think that will be a really good additional like add-on and something that will be utilised not just by myself but other players as well just to get the practice before they you know, jump in on the leaderboard or the league side of things 
and uh, you know start their league run instead of you know having the first loss or so and just being on a bad run. But yeah, as as I was mentioning, four nil losing on first half, literally came back four four, and my players were exhausted, like exhausted, man. And I wanted to make some substitutions, but my man scored on the 85th minute to make it five four, but. Honestly, I was actually well impressed by how my team came back and the goals that we scored, but just a bit disappointed that we couldn't get the win. But regardless, it could have been the best comeback, man. It could have been, but I'll check it out tomorrow. That'll be really good for you guys. But yeah, talking about today's topic, so uh, just wanted to quickly dive in around like Qatar's World Cup. You know, it's so close now. It's starting on the 20th of November. Um, you know, the stadiums, from what I've seen, they do look okay. Like, they do look really good. But again, it's not a factor of like the stadiums. It's like accommodation still hasn't been, you know, complete to the, the to the standard that it should be. You've got a lot of the workers still being on minimum pay. You know, human rights being ab absolutely like minimal in these countries, which is so sad to see. Especially the pay that these guys are getting compared to what they can be getting in their countries if they stayed there. And just in general, like the corruption around it, like you know, we've we've seen it for so many times. They want to do like areas of business. It's a it's a business at the end of the day. You know, we did see the option of Super Cup coming or whatever it was that uh, the Perez, the Real Madrid's owner, wanted to launch. And then this was all around corruption and money. We all know that. I don't know why David Beckham is literally being a sponsor and literally hyping up the whole Cata vibe. I know a lot of the the ex players or players aren't going to be watching the game and. To be honest with you, I don't want to be sitting down in the winter with mulled wine watching a, a World Cup. You know, we're so used to World Cups being in the summer. You know, relaxing, enjoying the fun. You know, it's just so much nicer instead of it being pitch black outside. You know, it's going to be 40 degrees or whatever it is Celsius in Qatar. But I don't know, man. I think it's just so silly, like the, the entire method of how they've done this. And again, it just people just need to open their eyes and they just need to show some more backlash in terms of these things happening. Um, but in my honest opinion, I think it's going to be a warm country that's going to win the World Cup. I think, you know, England or, you know, you've got the other clubs. They're not used to these high temperatures, even in the winter. You're not used to it. They're going to be going from like nine Premier League games in October to then going into like the World Cup from cold to hot, like drastically. I think that's going to have a massive impact. I do see either like Brazil winning the World Cup or Argentina, unfortunately, just again based around like them being more adaptable to these warm let's say atmosphere or um yeah humidity within the countries uh, but do let me know your thoughts in terms of the world cup who you think is going to win plus just generally around the world cup and the funny thing i wanted to share with you guys also is you know Qatar were playing a friendly they were supposed to have a friendly against bolivia i think but then they it got cancelled or whatever it was and then croatia under 23s were like okay look We'll do a friendly with you guys, but there was no senior squads, no big names from Croatia, you know, the likes of Modric or wherever it is playing for Croatia. It was just literally domestic Croatian players. <laughs> the under 20s or wherever it is for Croatia, they defeated the Kata national team 3 0. 3 0, unknown names. You have to understand they're unknown names that these people are. And that's just pure banter. That just shows, like, why. I don't know why the World Cups have been hosted down there, first of all, and why. I don't know. I've got, I've got so many questions to this crap, but. Yeah, that, that is it really. I, I just Yeah, let's see how the World Cup goes. But in my opinion, I think it's just absolutely awful. Let's just see. But also, we've got the Nations League, guys. We've got Belgium versus Wales. Uh, today, I do feel that's going to be an easy win for Belgium, 3-0. And then, of course, you've got France versus Austria. You've got Croatia versus Denmark. This is a group where I've mentioned, you know, the, you've got the likes of Austria, Croatia and Denmark. A group where you've got teams that are, let's say, underdogs as such. You know, they've always... Uh, performed very well on the national scene, but I've always been rated as under underrated as such. You know, Croatia doing fantastic in the uh, either the Euros or the World Cup, progressing towards the final. Denmark going into the semi-finals last season for the Euros. It was unfortunate with the whole Ericsson situation, but the, in fact they've done very well as a team. Uh, again, Austria again a, a very good underdog team, and these three have shown it in terms of that group. You know, France are at the bottom of the table. Uh, you've got Denmark at the top doing great you know just losing to Croatia 1-0 as well last time so in general it's a great group and it's good to see these underdog teams performing well but I do see it being an easy win for France 3-1 and then Croatia drawing to Denmark 1-1 and then the final game of let's say uh, let's say a good game for today is going to be Poland versus Netherlands uh, you know Netherlands are top of the table Poland being third with four points I see this being an easy win for Netherlands around like 3-1 as well 
Just because they're so strong, man, I do see Netherlands performing well within the Nations League or even Germany winning the Nations League. But that is it really, guys. I know we had a good performance from Scotland as well yesterday, 3-0. And we've also got some really strong games tomorrow as well. But do let me know your predictions, your thoughts, and also the season side of things if you do enjoy this and let me know your thoughts around it. But do like and subscribe as always, and I'll catch you guys on tomorrow's video. Take care and bye-bye. Well, he has to make the keeper work there. That's a bad miss. The sound of the referee's whistle.